have like three stops before I get to my final destination, or two stops, so I'm just getting food and doing work. Here we are on bending knees, giving praises to the Almighty. This is my second stop. I'm in Johannesburg. I have another seven hour layover, so it's been a journey. Yeah, we live in charity. Having those who are in need. Oh, we just can't take no bribe. But the truth we can't deny. You're welcome. You're welcome to my garden. My garden. It is day one in Lagos. So excited. Uh, we are going to an entrepreneurship forum today. And I'm super excited. When I first decided I was going to come to Nigeria, coming to, to be a part of the entrepreneurship culture was so important because it is done so well here. Just to give you a little background. Sorry, I keep stopping and starting because I'm trying to do other things too. Um, I am from Toronto. And Toronto also has a rich entrepreneur culture but I find that it kind of um, doesn't celebrate or highlight a uh, woman of color and a lot of times I will go to panel and it's the same people the same story and it's very difficult to find your story and um, your motivation amongst the, the same people so I wanted to come somewhere where everyone is gonna look like me doing great things um, I think they are funded thousands of entrepreneurs I think um, they're gonna be celebrating about a hundred new um, people that they funded this year it's gonna be an amazing day uh, we're not uh, my friend and I are going and we're not funded so we're just guests I don't know what the experience is gonna be like for us versus other people but I think it's gonna be a fun day <laughs> with action because he is all he is more action than talk. He committed one hundred million dollars to train, fund ten thousand African entrepreneurs from all fifty-four African countries over ten years. This women business owners being selected on the program this year is forty one percent. All the women business owners Baloko Market. Baloko. Baloko. Baloko Market. Here we are on bending knees. Giving praises to the Almighty. Review quickly. That was hectic. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mor was... Moroccan market is child's play compared to this. Okay. This was hectic. Charity. Having those who are in need. No, we just can't take no bribe. It 
Hey, it's day two of Lagos and I've already been out. I went to the market, the main market, and it was hectic. <laughs> uh, yesterday was amazing. We did the entrepreneurship forum. There was about 1,400 uh, new entrepreneurs that got funded. It was amazing to hear their ideas. There were um, guys that were making drones so farmers could use it to spray crops and and um, investigate areas that were hard to get to by foot. There was this amazing one. Um, I'm gonna put the details below. I think it's called Mama, Mama Money. And what it does is you can um, you can invest some money and that money goes to a low income women to start their own business. I thought that was excellent. Right now we're gonna go to the Lagos Fashion Week. <laughs> so we're at Lagos Fashion Week. It's supposed to start at 4? 4. It is now 6 p.m. 6. Yeah, 6 p.m. <laughs> so we're two hours behind. The show is supposed to run for five hours. So we're going to see what time they actually get started. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. see. Let's see what time we get We out wore two hour dresses. Dresses that expire in, in two, two hours. hours. Like I so. can't breathe anymore. <laughs> and we didn't eat. We didn't eat. We cannot drink a lot of stuff because we can't take off the dresses to go to the bathroom. So this is a very interesting experience. Like the way we're sitting is not for this video. I don't understand why we can't run on time. Like why? We can't yeah. nothing we can't. be on time. We can't. We can't. So we were supposed to start at four. We're going in at seven. My makeup PM. has melted. Makeup has melted. Lada is about to explode. Dress we're the mess. seams on the dress. Wait, wait, we're Are getting in at seven. I don't know when they're gonna actually start. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, a good no, point. You guys they have haven't no. started yet. Mm, this is good ridiculous. Point. This is just another level. <laughs> today which is the floating village in Nigeria um, we're going to the school because my friend is a donor to the school so they invited us as donors um, to come visit um, I wanted to go to this floating village but I felt some apprehension because I was only fascinated by it and I didn't, I didn't think just being fascinated by something is enough to go and see it because it's where people live and I was feeling very conflicted and I'm like that's the thing about travel it really makes you see certain things about yourself um, so if, even though I'm really fascinated um, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go but we got this invitation we're gonna go to the school we're gonna see how it goes um, see if we can go into the village I don't know if I'll take pictures or videos I don't know I'll have to see how I feel but 
yeah um, she's a donor she's a, she's an amazing woman amazing I'm gonna try to do like an intro with her and she's a donor so we're just gonna go and um, celebrate what um, their donation has done you're welcome to my garden my garden of love Get to do our best And Jaja will do the rest Through the love we're all in this garden Seeds of love we should be planted Okay, let's talk We have, we have, a, we have face mask on Where's Bissola? Okay <laughs> 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 Yes, this is good. This is good. We had okay. we, we had a good day. Yes. We had a good day. It was um it was very inspirational. Mm -hmm. What's the name of the group? Slum to Slum, slum to, to School. school. Yeah, with our face mask. <laughs> slum to School. Slum, slum. So they are they they go into they take over government schools and put in um, their program, yeah, which involves like redoing some of the classes to mm -hmm. become STEM centers, mm -hmm. skill center, yeah. and I think it was like an IT center or yeah. center of excellence. Yeah, uh, they give the kid, they pay, they because tuition is free, but you need books, you need um, what's it called, uniforms, school, you school tenses, supplies, school supplies, and all those things. So they provide those. They provide the those. Yeah. It was really good. So and today, mentorship. So Visola is a donor. We, Thank we you. To, we have to do a, a like a Q and A yes. to like capsule this time in our life. <laughs> okay. We should do one of those like you know the relationship Q and A, but try to find like a friend's one. Okay, we'll so do we can it. watch his ten years and be like, <laughs> you remember when you were twenty eight and you thought? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we need the reminders. Facebook already helps us. <laughs> You're a failure. <laughs> exactly. But um. But Visola yeah. is a donor, yeah. so we got invited to come and see the um opening. just the opening, and we went, and it was a really really good experience, and it was in that village, um, in a floating village, floating city, yeah, floating exactly. city. village, yeah, village. Yeah. But we didn't get to go into the city and see it, but it was nevertheless like an extremely yeah. great day. Yeah. The leader of the group, he said a line that I wrote down that I wanted oh, yeah. to remember. Um, uncomfortable yes you should feel uncomfortable. you should feel uncomfortable with 13 point such, two such an epic line. million yeah. kids out of school we should all feel uncomfortable, feel, feel uncomfortable. we cried or well we didn't really cry we, we held tried it not to. <laughs> but we teared up so yeah. many times yeah. like when you yeah. see those kids it just makes it more real because everything is just numbers and you're like yeah. okay yeah, yeah. 13.2 million people but the, these are the reality you, one is enough one mm -hmm. is enough and that was yeah. like such a good line that we should all feel very uncomfortable and yeah. I think that was one thing we took from the day. And two was if you're doing nothing, start doing something. Any little thing. Yeah. Any little thing. Goes a long way. Stop unboxing makeup and start unboxing <laughs> impact. <laughs> Open yeah. your box and mm -hmm. then I donate it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so that's one. And if you are doing good, do good better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those are yeah. it. Well, cool. good day. Cool. Good day. <laughs> so music center. We're at the Muzon Center to watch what? To watch uh, Such Is Life. To watch Such Is Life, a Nigerian play. What did you like? Oh, I remember. I like okay. um, not too sweet. I like um, rum, gin, uh, tequila, um, and something with the tanginess. Okay. Yeah. Oh, what did you make? <laughs> I made something with tequila for you, man. Okay, something with tequila. And it's, I, hmm? it's called the Bosco Margarita with the jalapeno and tang. Bosco, Bosco. Old school margarita. Old school margarita. Old school margarita. Okay. 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 Let's taste it. Cheers. With the pepper. <laughs> She got the pepper because she thought me. You want to enjoy it more? Just uh, chew the pepper. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so 
Show your back to the pepper. You really backed in the pepper? Sure. What are you doing? <laughs> no, it's good. Because it's, good. it's not pepper like spicy, it's pepper like bell pepper. So it's okay. sweet pepper. Oh, yeah. it's bell pepper. This okay. is actually okay. really okay. nice. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 What so do I what, have? what did you tell him? Oh, you know? rum. Not too sweet, rum. Very okay. easy. That's okay. called rum collection. Rum collection. Rum recollection. Rum recollection. Oh, so More tomorrow depressed. you should Rumble. remember anything. <laughs> I like that. Okay, go for it. Jeremy, <laughs> always deliver. <laughs> We're at La, La Capan Tropicana. Got it. La Campaina. La Campaina. I'm over it. Paina. La Campaina. Paina. Yeah. La Campaina. And it's, it's, when you say it was Edo, Ed, um, what, what culture? Oh, the Yoruba? I thought you were Yoruba. I'm Yoruba. Oh, okay. I was answering him in the language. Oh, okay. 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 So all the signs are in Yoruba. We're having Bisola made lunch, which is so good. And then she put the ice on the food, so it's cold. Yes, I'm telling you. <laughs> and we have all of her laptop to do work. <laughs> So we're going to a bunch of different art galleries. Um, excited to see the different works. Uh, I don't remember every single one of the names. So as I go, I'll try to. The vlogging is hard. <laughs> this is harder than it looks. Um, I'll try to um, talk a little bit about each museum or gallery. <music> <laughs> okay, so we are at the National Museum, yes. and we did the main museum, yes. and we went through, what were the exhibits? Beads, so, mm -hmm. so facial, the, facial marks, facial marks um, masks, masks uh, religion. religion, then we went through the yeah. cycle of life, we started from birth to, to Afterlife. No, fertility to birth, <laughs> yeah. to adulthood to afterlife, yeah. which is quite interesting. Yeah. Um, I think one of the most interesting things that I found was every single thing has a meaning and you don't have more than that. So yeah. you only need 15 things to live yeah. and they all have like a significant. Yes, sorry. Um, my okay, <laughs> so now we're going to the government, Yeah. Uh, which I'm less excited about. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go look at Let's that. See. Oh, we can't take pictures or videos. Oh, I thought you said extra plates. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, can we get an extra plate? 
But let's start. If she likes it, I'll get more. And this is the goat soup. Goat for the I'm soup. I'm excited about that. Okay, so we're having goat soup. Goat pepper soup. Goat pepper soup. Pepper soup. soup. Yeah. They were having chicken, you know, chicken soup. So this is edikai corn. Chicken is just a meat. Edikai Yeah, edikai corn. This is supposed to be a soup, but it it's has a soup. no... Oh, it's a, like a little bit. Soup. <laughs> yeah. And then this is the yam. famous pounded yam. Mm -hmm. Everything tastes really good. I like the soup the most because it's like manish water, which is like a Jamaica go soup. And it's my favorite soup. Atlantic and we're just gonna drive around um, they allowed us to come through the gate so whatever yes. <laughs> uh, so Echo Atlantic so this is the this we're actually on the Atlantic, Atlantic Ocean, Ocean so they've dumped it up yeah. so how come how about the people that used to live that's the people they kicked out and pushed pushed to Jack yeah, on the resettlement center and Aja resettlement they were okay. living on the beach they were, they were living on the, on the beach, beach. Yes, oh so they, they were on the beach front it, yeah so they got they moved them away yeah oh, okay mm -hmm. well they resettled them but mm -hmm. they didn't give them housing or anything yeah. to build this great thing we're gonna look at yeah. and we were supposed to go to the museum to see um, because they killed a lot so the yeah. ones who didn't want to leave they killed them yeah so there is there's like, literally blood on this land water. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It'd be dramatic, but it's true. It's like, so if so you think dramatic. of it that way, it's true. But it's we didn't true. get to see that exhibition, but mm. we're here to see um, why they moved the people. We're here to see the development and if it's worth it. Do you know how much it costs to live here? Oh, wait, okay. I, I don't yeah. know the exact figures, but we can do a retake. Okay. Or a second part two coming and then soon. Figure we'll it check. Out. We have it. Figure it I out have how much it costs yeah, to live. We'll, we'll do it. Okay. okay. Today we went to Bagdari, Badagri, Badagri, Badagri. and mm -hmm. it is um, the, the 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 start of the transatlantic slave trade. This is the port from where they left um, the slaves left Africa. Uh, to get there, <laughs> to get there was extremely interesting. It was probably the hardest time I've had in Nigeria since. I've been here. Hardest time I've ever had in Nigeria. <laughs> and I'm Nigerian. She lives here. So, <laughs> the yeah. irony is not lost on us that it was a it was a tough experience to get to the slave trade. <laughs> yeah. port. Okay. So how did we start? You tell us okay, the road. Okay. So we decided to take a ferry instead of driving because Badagri is so far by road and the road is under construction. There's just so much going on there. So we said, oh, okay, let's take a ferry. And so many people have said taking a ferry makes sense and they've done it so many times. So it made sense. And we did our research, we spoke to people, we planned this. So we decided to go to CMS to take a ferry from CMS to Apapa. And when we get to Apapa, they told us to take a bike from, which is like an Okada, from Apapa to Liverpool. Then when we got to Liverpool, they told us that we would find another ferry that would take us from Liverpool to Baragri. Simple. So we started the journey at 7 a.m. We went to CMS, got to CMS. That was a smooth trip from CMS yeah, to Apapa. Yeah, very, yeah. very smooth. Like 10 minutes. 10 it was minutes, not bad yeah. at all. Then very we got easy. to Apapa. When we got to Apapa, um, we asked around and they told us, oh yeah, take a bike to Liverpool. So we got on the bike to Liverpool. This, and was, this was the first time on, on a bike. On a and bike, yes. 
I swear that the guy that was riding the bike, he probably went home and called his mom that he got abused at his job. <laughs> you have all of me was on the back of this guy, <laughs> and yeah. I felt so bad. But I was like, I don't know where else to put this. I'm hanging off for dear life. Yeah, but he drove. Slow. He drove. Yeah, he drove slow. He, he, he was a good bad. rider, yeah, was it? Yeah. Bad? And we told, so we started telling people, oh, we're going to Badagri, and everybody made it seem like, oh, that was a good idea, yeah. like an idea yeah. that made sense. So we didn't see anything no, wrong no. with what we were doing. Like, so far the entire journey was smooth people were saying it was far but yes. they weren't saying like you're crazy it's really far they were yeah. just like oh it's, it's far away it's far yes, away but it's doable <laughs> kind of thing right so we got to liverpool when we got to liverpool they told us that the the uh, ferry to badagri has already no won't be leaving till 5 p.m and this was like 8 8 a.m so we were like no 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 like we will be coming back at that time right that we want to go now so they told us oh um okay okay the guy did tell us though he's like you can come back at four and we're like no we're going there now we want to go during the day and then he told us okay just take um a ferry to ojo and when you get to ojo you take a bike to badagri sounded simple so we got on the ferry we went to ojo 20 minutes later we get to ojo then we went to meet the bike guys we're like oh we're going to badagri they said no Too first far. one said no second one is like no too, too far. far third one we're like wait a minute so we decided you know what since we can't get a bike let's go back inside and try and get a ferry then we went to meet this guy trying to negotiate and he even wanted to go at first then he thought about how far it was and he's like no he's like, i'm no, not let going to find a bus right exactly now. <laughs> so he came out and then decided to go find like a bus for us to take and we get to the oh i even forgot to tell that part where we got in the keke marua to go oh to my bus. god we had to get so to i drove keke in one of the keke mari i'd have to put a picture for one of these we had to drive in that to get to the bus so when we finally got to the bus the bus was heading to seme which is the um the border between um nigeria and republic of benin so anyways we got on the bus we're sitting there at me i was so scared i've never been in, in a bus before not only that my biggest worry was like i've heard so many stories about nigerian buses so i just did not know what to expect i was so scared and then the woman next to me was like oh i'm a foreigner please move um so you can sit closer she to the real window nigerian and i didn't hear that she said that because i then i'd be like this cause yeah because we look real foreign. she's like i'm a foreigner move to this side oh so God. they don't bug me i was like okay anyways we started the journey it was such a there was no road we were just driving like, oh god i don't i'm telling i think the i think the, the part, i think that's the part where i started getting scared this whole time i was fine the bikes everything was fine but some boys came to the bus and started hitting the bus with some big sticks and I was like, in Jamaica, we have garrisons. And these are like parts of cities that are run by especially young men. And you can't just move through and through these places unless you're with someone who knows the, the, sp the space. So when I saw that, I was like, holy shit, are we going into garrisons? Like, are we going to places that we can't actually like we shouldn't actually be in yeah but anyways the bus driver just didn't stop he drove on i was like lord gosh yeah we kept driving and then you have to start to put the okay so we started where were we when the police stop us i don't even know so we we, we were on this on the same road. same road yeah and then the police stop us and at that point i started to get a little bit scared because they all had i don't know what type of gun it is the long gun those are not ak's I don't know. They look automatic, yeah. so they could be AKs, like yeah. these long ass guns. We sat there, they circled the bus, they started talking to different people. They started talking to Visola. And at this point, I'm like, Lodgy. I mean, we were weary. We were just, not, we, we really tried to dress down, nothing to like draw attention to us. And they started talking to Visola and they asked Visola to get off the bus. Then this police came to the window and he said, you know, are you, where are you? Are you Nigerian? And say, I'm with her. And he's like, okay, they're already talking to her. Then he walk away a little bit. But now she's off the bus. So I'm like, I need to get off the bus. And then another <laughs> cop came back and he was the one that was screaming at her. And he takes the gun and knocked the window to get my attention. And I turned and I looked at him and he's like, get off the bus and i was like this is when I, this is this is the point in my life when i know we were bad bitches <laughs> i turned and i look at it and i'm like okay let's talk it out 
And I turned to the lady, I'm like, I need to get off the bus. She's like, don't get off. So this is why, this is why I'm starting to get scared because you're outside screaming. Everybody on the bus does not want me to get off the bus. And I'm like, why do they not want me to get off the bus? Are these not police officers? Am I in danger? But I can't stay on the bus if she's off the bus. I have to get off the bus. She said, no, tell them you're going to church. Tell them you're Nigerian. You're going to church. Don't get, she wouldn't let me pass. So the man start knocking the gun on the window to the point where she started getting scared and then she moved and let me get off the bus and at this point i was like holy i think we're in a little bit of trouble yeah. so me i'm coming off the bus first of all like okay i'll tell my side so he came to meet me he's like you where are you from i'm like nigeria where are you coming from lagos then he asked for my id so i had my driver's license with me i gave it to him he saw my name and then he started speaking to me in my language and i'm like i was not even in the mood to be honest i was already in a pissed off mood maybe i could have pretended and played along <laughs> but I was not in the mood so I'm like I don't understand what you're saying if you want to speak to me speak the language like speak English why are you you know I, I was not in the mood so anyways I think he got pissed off and I think it started off as a joke like he just wanted to say oh yeah. you're from this place so he asked me where my parents are from right because you should be able to speak the language from where your parents are from so I told him where my parents are from and apparently he's from the same place so I think that's where like he just wanted to prove a point that I should be able to speak the language of my parents so that's when he told me to come off the bus so I call, I'm, as I'm coming off the bus me I'm already calling for backup I'm calling my dad I'm calling my brother nobody's picking up I'm like guys what's going on pick up the phone I need you so I came off the bus and like he's going on and on about the language and all of that and I just got so irritated like it just hit me how frustrated that I was because first of all there was a little bit of fear like I was scared in the bus the whole process was scary like I was just pissed off. I was hot. I was tired. I was irritated. And I just went off on them. So I just started shouting. I was just like, yeah, what do you want from me? I don't have to speak the language of my parents. No, 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 no. <laughs> and you know, like, that would just get them more pissed off. Right so, off. like, and, like, when I get really upset, my lower lips start um, <laughs> trembling. I started trembling and, like, breathing hard. And I started crying. And then everybody, like, people on the bus actually came down from the yeah, bus. They were and like, they started yelling at the officers. Mad. Because they were like, come on, like, like leave, leave them alone, alone yeah. you know? and we're just going on and on we look like two poor things yeah like, oh god are people, honestly, like, people felt bad for us i leave them alone and then at this point like finally i got through to my dad so i gave the phone to the officer to my the phone to my dad oh so as i'm still shouting they had figured out that chanel was from jamaica, jamaica. that was so now the I, issue. I cut out canada no offense canada i'm <laughs> canadian now i did my citizenship but i find that when i travel jamaica gets me a lot further than, than canada. canada so like where are you from like i'm from jamaica and yeah like, oh jamaica Jamaica. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everyone likes to make it. So then they found that out. So then they they asked her for her passport, and yeah. she said she didn't have I didn't it. So bring it. At the, yeah, obviously you wouldn't take it. But yeah. we didn't even like. I was like, don't take phones. Like, yeah. be careful. You know, because you don't know. I have a yeah. picture on my phone, but which the phone I did, wasn't but with I didn't her. Bring the phone. So she's explaining to the guys that oh, we just wanted to go to Badagri to check it out. Like we didn't bring all these things with us because literally we just wanted to go and see Badagri. And then the guy's like, well, you know, we need to know. So he pulls me aside and he said telling me that you see the thing is that someone else another guy a level-headed guy he pulls me aside and he's like the thing is that um because you're on the on a road that leads to another another country even if you don't get to the border everybody needs to have identifications if you're nigerian you have a nigerian identification mm. if you're not you need to have a foreign you need to have your papers because we just want to make sure that you didn't come to nigeria illegally and trying to leave to another country illegally so i kind of understood where he was coming from but it was the way they did it yeah, they it was the way so... they did it like it was maybe they were trying to joke i didn't find it yeah, funny it was yeah. not a joke so they explained that to my dad right so my dad gives the phone to me he's like okay just leave them alone and just go back home just come back, just home. back home meanwhile i'm in the corner making jokes because she's playing bad cop i'm good cop uh, yeah she was I'm a good like, cop i'm like yeah. I'm, Jama I'm nigerian like that's how that's how i got to jamaica <laughs> that's where i come from yeah so i think they, it just became a joke like they started laughing with them. anyways then um we they put us in a in a cab and told us or told the cab guy they're going to bad agree so we got to bad agree so that's the end so now so we the story is that, is yeah that, is that's that the end. end before we get oh you want to finish the journey on this yeah one? yeah okay it wasn't that dramatic at all. No, it was. Come in, it was. Okay, oh, the, continue. The boat. The yeah, boat. the boat. Yeah. So <laughs> after, so after that, they put us in a taxi that he said would get us there. So we went yeah. to the taxi, and the guy actually got us to the square. 
then we met our guide and then we went to the port yeah. and we talk about the port separate um about the experience there and then to get back we took a boat to we took a boat to uh Ojo. Ojo. this is like banana boat yeah banana boat yes and which cost us like I don't like, like 40 no 30 30 30, yeah, 30 thousand naira and then we took, and took us like almost two hours two hours it was, it was long. so long it's long it was so long and yeah. then from from Oja, Oja to to CMS CMS we took another boat which was like 7,000 but the thing is that like the boat we took from Oja to CMS was like a banana boat and like the waves were killer they were killer killer and you like, know water could get hard I swear to you, they were like we were like bumping up like and we down i stay praying <laughs> it was so it's bad. funny because on the way dude that's why i kept saying let's get into a car let's get into a car because i wanted to get off the water because I, I don't swim the life vests are old and life vests kind of expire i don't know yeah. if it's expired but they have a time when you need to change them and i'm like yeah. i don't know if these work yeah when we were coming back I'm like, like let's get on the let's get on the water. Let's get I back know. on the water. Let's get like, off the land. <laughs> me, my thing, my reason reasoning for coming back on the water was that I know that the roads are you bad. Me, my thing was the traffic because I've yeah, sat like, through that traffic go, I don't before. I don't want to go back through and the, it's painful. The cops. I don't want to go through anything. I'm like, let's go by water. Yeah. So that, <laughs> and then I forgot that there are They're officers. Fighting on water the navy oh, so the navy yeah, stopped the us navy too. Stopped. at this point i was just so irritated <laughs> I, was like, I didn't I even care i didn't like, even greet the guy like normally you yeah, say good yeah. afternoon i was no, just like i was this. still there going hi <laughs> i didn't even smile straight face where are you going where are you coming from oh joe the guy already I, it was, answered it was at this point us? i became shade oh Shad yeah yeah shade yes. so that's my yoruba name. name my yoruba name at this shade. point i'm shade <laughs> I couldn't. Like honestly, at the, like I was just irritated with everybody. It was, you know, the Uber driver. Yeah. I was this close to blowing up on him, but I'm just like, I'm not going to transfer my no, aggression. No more transfer. That's not. That's oh, all yeah. the, the, the police. The, yeah, they're, they're they're transferring me. anger. Yeah, just, just yeah. It's after so after I, I I um after all the shouting and he pulled us aside, he was like, you know what's wrong with with you right now? You know what you're doing? I'm like, what? He's like transfer of anger. <laughs> <laughs> like you're a, you're a therapist now. <laughs> oh my god, that was funny. I think we could start a business called the um, travel travel psychology. Oh my god. The only issue is that is that if you know things are gonna work out, you're you behave differently. Yeah. But we there were points where I was just like, are we gonna actually get out of this okay? And it really so showed scared. you like what you're made of. I yeah. was just like, I if I go back to Canada and let fear stop me from doing anything, I need I a, remember I need this. a slap. No, literally really. turned, looked into the man gun, and I said, I'm coming out to work it out. I'm coming out. Exactly. That was just <laughs> me. I didn't even see the weapon. I was just so angry because I'm like. <laughs> First of all, this whole trip did not go as planned, so that already upsets me. But not only that, like, what the hell did we do? Like, yeah. what did we do? The thing that was going through my head as I was coming down from that bus was like, what do you want? Can we swear? <laughs> <laughs> I can wipe out anything. Okay, what the, do you want? Like, what do you want from me? Like, we didn't do anything. You literally just profiled us, and you just caught big yeah. fishes. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. Oh, no, I was pissed. We're done. Anyways, okay. it's okay. over. So we've decided okay. that we're just going to drink wine yes. and stay in and stay in the house today. And we're going to house. edit our itinerary to take out all adventure. No more. No more. No I've more. I've seen a we're lot. Done. I've seen a lot. Bisola has showed me her country. <laughs> so no we more. Will, we will no sit more. in the lap of comfort yes. and drink wine. Drink wine. <laughs> the we need to open that bottle. Do you want red or white? Uh, I don't even know. Can we have both? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Aww. I don't know if it's gonna do a lead up. I don't know where I'm gonna put this in the video, how it's gonna go, what I'm gonna cut, whatever. But we we just finished talking about the journey, which was hectic. So the journey is either before this or after this, <laughs> don't know. But we finally got to Bag Badagri. Badagri. Mm -hmm. And um to do the tour to see the port and this is the point of no return. It was it was pretty it was I don't know what's the right word I'm lost for word but it was it was an amazing experience for me because growing up in Jamaica we we studied history and we studied Caribbean history a lot and we always started the transatlantic tra slave trade in Africa so I, I know the term point of no return I actually we I think we used to call it Badagri or something <laughs> like that but it was in our textbook so I knew of the these places and we had to study them and 
when you're in high school you do Caribbean history you don't do world history until you go to something called sixth form which is like a in between high school and university which I think is very very good and I hope they don't change that in Jamaica but we did all Caribbean history for five years um, we don't we don't know much about anything that happened in Africa so the guy um the, the the tour guide showed us around he brought us i'm gonna go back to what he did first but he brought us in these little uh, um holding cells and they were probably i don't even know what the measurement is but yeah. they were like square maybe four by eight like a little square and they would put 40 people hold hole in there with just a little window and he would talk about like the different techniques that they would start using to break down the slave before they even got on the ship before they even got to the Caribbean and I just want to say to Mr. Kanye where slavery was not a choice <laughs> they yeah. the we we felt the the shackles and these were things some of these things I've actually felt because we still have some of them in Jamaica in our um, ports but um some of them I didn't know about so the, the biggest one was the one that they used to make sure people couldn't talk mm -hmm. where they put out the drill a hole from your top and bottom lip and actually put a padlock on your mouth so you can't speak you can't communicate and um they one of the other ones too was the kids i've never seen the kids shackles so it was just these little tiny ones that they would put on the children um and they, they were saying that the children were like free additions if you bought enough slaves you would get one or two or three kids and um it just <sighs> It was just like so hard I I don't know how I didn't just break down I didn't cry because I felt like I was you, you know that crying that you do you have to like almost like bend I yeah. felt like that's the cry I wanted to do like I was so frustrated from everything and then just to get there and recognize that it, it is as bad as you thought it was gonna be I was just like what the hell the biggest the biggest 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 part of this for me was like I was saying before we did a lot of history but I never knew and I never recognized that I even had that question I never knew what other the other Africans got that were selling slaves I never knew and the first thing this guy showed us was what they got and I was just I think that was when I was just like I'm done yeah. <laughs> I'm finished they got whiskey a bottle of whiskey gave you 20 slaves yeah, uh, yeah. Something Umbrella, like that. I think, uh, we gave you forty, a hundred. 100. 100. Yeah. The rifles and the guns and those were 40. were forty. Yeah. And then the one, I think, the one, the one that broke, <laughs> the straw that broke the camel bag was the ceramic bowls. I'm like, what the hell are you doing with ceramic yeah. bowls? But they would trade ceramic bowls for twenty slaves, mm -hmm. and I just felt like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know why that was so astonishing to me the ceramic i think because it just didn't have any purpose at yeah. least the guns and stuff would make them more more powerful to go get more slave but it just didn't make any sense mm -hmm. especially because the day before we did the the the, the, the museum and they talked about just how it was like 15 items an adult needed to live in their hut and i'm like where do you go from needing just 15 items to deciding yeah. that you need ceramic bowls that was definitely the thing yeah. that and the second thing that I think really, and it always, every time I, I hear the dates of slavery, the date of colonization, the dates of segregation, I am, I'm always still shocked. Like it was Yesterday. so recent, yeah. so recent. My grandmother probably missed slavery by the, by, <laughs> by a tip, yeah. but she was a part of colonization. Yeah. Like I, it was so recent. So every time people are like, oh, we need to get over it. I'm like, eh, not really because yeah. the economic impact is still there. The impact on people is exactly, still there. Exactly. When I look at the culture here versus Jamaica, I can tell that something happened before people got to the Caribbean. Uh -huh. We're very individual, individualistic. We think differently, and you can see it. And it's because of it's because of that journey, uh -huh. and just like they had pictures of some of the slaves that they and when they got you know ones that were aggressive that they had broken mm -hmm. so either castrated or ever or you know the ones that were probably fighting back a bit and you you could just see like mental exhaustion is real and i just don't i think we i think we we look at that time in our life to especially as black people with a little disdain Yes, we should see with the same, but I think we're a little embarrassed about it too. But our forefathers yeah. were strong. Yeah. They were strong. And I don't know how to also reconcile the fact that we sold ourselves. I know. I don't know how to reconcile I, that. I, I'm still working on that's that. That's my biggest thing. 
I, that's I, my I biggest don't, thing. I don't know. I'm still working on that. That's still a, a, a big thing for me. Yeah. That and the fact that they still, I guess it would do, it would mess up history. But I found that the guy that owned the port, like that, there's still, it's not reverence, but all of his stuff is still there. They kept the grave. Yeah. And I guess to get rid of that would destroy the history yeah, in some sense. Yeah, you have to keep it. You yeah, have to keep it because people I, need to see. You yeah. need, we need, and I think that's what the problem is. I think a lot of people actually, especially here, we don't really study our history okay let me rephrase it depends on the school you go to because public schools we don't really go to public schools and in private schools we follow like the british or american curriculum so we do world history we don't really study african history maybe at the end in your last few years of school you know you will touch on it but it's not given as much importance as other subjects so we don't really see that part not everybody gets to see that part of our history so having something like that where you know other people can educate you and let you see the reality of what's going on because to be honest like the same thing is going on now but yeah. it's just modern day slavery it's not the same way but look at the way we treat like mm -hmm. people who work for us like it's it's the same yeah, thing yeah. it's the same no, thing going it, on and, now. and i think that's something to where that point like that part in jamaica we gloss over so it's always like um, white versus black white men were evil yeah black. but there was a there there is a There's shade of gray and, there yeah. where there were black men who for their own freedom decided to turn themselves turn their yeah. backs on their people yeah and we need to be aware of that because we we do it even today exactly. where we turn our backs on the on the people that need us the most yeah. in order to to climb up yeah. it's all about the climb it's always about getting ahead and taking yeah. care of yourself at some point we have to stop and say how do we care for how do we care for others it's not enough for me alone to go go ahead yeah. we need other people and to come it along. comes back to what we talked about last week with slum to school right yeah. you should be uncomfortable you should be uncomfortable, uncomfortable yeah with the amount of, with your brother with I, I don't want to use the word brother and sister, yeah, but yeah. you know what I mean? You should be uncomfortable with the failures of people yeah. like you around yeah. you. You should be uncomfortable. You shouldn't be comfortable to be the only one at the top. Who yeah, are you going yeah. to talk to? And a lot of people are, are like that. They're actually happier yeah, being the only, only one. one. And I see that too in business where yeah. I've met other other women that are happy being the only woman exactly. in the room. Are you crazy? talk about yesterday yes. it was a slow day that's why we didn't do any videos we yes. went to brunch at a very yes. cute place what was yeah. it called spa spa yeah and it has a really nice view yeah then we went home and we slept <laughs> Did we, oh yeah we yes. slept and woke up yeah, yeah. We woke up. yeah. Then we were supposed to go to the movies and go out but then we went to the movies and we watched um king of men king of men which I thought was excellent. Bisola is unsure. I don't know how I felt. The movie was too long. How many? Three hours? It was three hours. hours. It was three a long hours movie. long. It was At long. one point, like, I didn't long. understand. Like, I understood what was going on, but <laughs> it was just too much. Like, I don't know if I liked it or not because it was so long. It was too long. Although, yeah. the cinematography yeah. was amazing. Yeah. The cinematography was the good. The music was, was good. And, yes, and the, the acting, acting was good. Everyone could act. Yeah. The so that was amazing. Yeah. The yeah. storyline was good, but yeah. I think if it was shot, it would have been. Hey! Okay. What? So we're taking selfies. No, hey. we're, we're, we're doing video. So we're at the Lucky Conservation Center. Center. Uh, we wanted to do the canopy walk and take some photos. The canopy is closed. And that's like the biggest highlight. So yeah. we're just going to do the boardwalk and then um, just look around.
the last day. Oh, the, the light's too bright. Today, Today is the last day. Do I have to go? I want to stay. <laughs> <laughs> Today is the last day because tomorrow is not a full day. Tomorrow. Mm, we're, we're going to a wedding. Yes. Thanks to Inwe, who's in the bathroom. She's yeah. not here. <laughs> So I've been experiencing my first Nigerian wedding. If I get in, I'm not invited. <laughs> She's like, who are you? One, two, three. You're getting in. We got this. Good news is that I, I bring good luck everywhere I go. Okay, Shanae. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I wish you the couple best. Best, yes. best wishes. <laughs> <laughs> but what did we do yesterday? It's been a while. Yesterday? Yesterday, what did we do? Yesterday, we just, um, oh, Lord. Oh, we went, oh, went to, to the, the market. market to get shea butter <laughs> and, and black soap. soap. Yeah. And then we went out to the night and did a lot of club hopping. Yes. Where lot. we saw a guy with a, hmm. Hmm. I can't hmm. say the S word, a prosthetic okay. doll um, coming a out. Doll. A sex doll a sex coming doll. to the club. He went out with his sex doll, put the sex doll in, in a, a wheelchair. wheelchair. It was the heights of it. Yeah. It was very sad. But we had yeah. a good fun night. Yeah, it was nice. We danced. And, and now we're going out today. Yes. Exhausted. <laughs> I am.